I finally got the pile of parts that works for the Colt's front suspension together. Previously you saw me press together a pair of Expo LRV minivan steering knuckles with turbo eclipse bearings, hubs, and seals. The dust shields got a little bit beat up in their previous life in the junkyard and with me working on them. Nothing a hammer can't fix. I'm using the 92 all-wheel drive turbo eclipse brake calipers and rotors because they're vented discs for better cooling and because they're actually a perfect fit on these Expo knuckles with the 5 lug eclipse hubs pressed in. The rest of the Eclipse suspension stuff you see here is pretty much useless. There's several things I don't like about its geometry and some of it's dangerous, but we'll get to some of that shortly. What I call the hats are these studded mounting brackets with the bearings in them. They're the original ones from the Colt. All I'm using from the DSM setup are the upper spring perches. I picked up a set of KYB front struts for an 89 to 92 Mirage. It only makes sense to use them as the rest of what's bolted to the suspension is designed around their geometry. At first glance, you'll notice that both of the bolt holes line up exactly the same on both struts. They're the same diameter as OE Turbo Eclipse struts. They only have two significant differences. The Colt struts lower spring perch is 8 and 7 eighths of an inch when it stood up like this, and the Turbo Eclipse perch is 10 and a quarter inches. That means you can achieve a 1 and 3 8 inch drop with 100% factory parts on a 1G all-wheel drive DSM simply by changing out your stock struts with a set for an 89 and 92 Mirage. They're both 21 inches tall. The other major difference is the length of the strut shaft. The Colt strut is 8 and 7 16 of an inch long. The DSM strut is 3 8 of an inch shorter at 8 and 1 16 of an inch. All the hardware between them is otherwise completely interchangeable. I picked up a set of Megan Racing lowering springs for an 89 and 94 Eclipse. They're supposed to provide a 2 inch drop on a DSM. I'm using lowering springs because DSM springs left 4.5 to 5 inches of wheel gap with the engine in the car. The difference in perch height coupled with these drop springs will shave 3 and 3 eighths of an inch. The painted surface of both parts provided little grip to keep the spring stationary, so I used a cut section of 3 8 inch breather hose to help secure them in place. The fastening hardware that bolts the knuckle assembly to the strut is the same, but these parts will need to be modified later. These are spring compressors. Correction, these are really nice spring compressors. They grab both sides of the spring and compress them evenly, simultaneously. They're less likely to slip than some of the simpler versions, but you make up for that safety with trying to get the damn things on the springs. It's worth the wait. You'll see how easily this comes apart. First, compress the springs with an impact wrench. Then use a 19mm socket to remove the nut from the top of the strut. All you have to do is loosen the main bolt and the spring safely decompresses. So I've got the hat and the perch. The rest of this stuff is junk. Time to put the other one together. Check to make sure you've got the perch lined up with the strut. There's a sight hole in both the top and bottom perch that you can see through when it's all aligned correctly. Once lined up, install the hat and the nut to secure the assembly. Make sure it doesn't spin like it does here when you're tightening the top nut. I caught it and fixed it off camera, but just be aware it can happen. As for the brake assembly, Expo brakes would work great for the four lug guys, but Expo brakes have solid rotors that are more prone to heat soak than the vented DSM rotor is. However, the four lug Expo hub fits a DSM axle and that opens up a lot of options for the front wheel drive crowd. Either one is a huge upgrade on this car. It appears the Turbo DSM or Expo brake parts line up flawlessly. I'm just thrilled the stuff I already had was a perfect fit. Earlier I mentioned some geometry issues caused by using DSM knuckles. 
The tie rods are mounted the opposite direction on a DSM. The taper for the tie rods on the Expo knuckles are oriented the same way as the original Colt knuckles and rack. This lines the lower control arm and steering linkage up parallel to one another and eliminates a bump steer condition caused by them being different lengths. Check the info section for more about bump steer. At this point it needs camber correction and an alignment, but for now I just want to see what this did to the ride height. There's about 3 degrees of positive camber, but I can easily fix that modifying the strut mounts. It's extremely towed in right now, but an alignment will fix that as well. I've got huge knuckles. Depending on who you are, there's just shy of a two-finger gap. I should get about a half-inch more clearance once the camber and toe are corrected. These two 15, 55, 16-inch tires I'm using for fitting are enormous in these little wheel wells. I love the way it looks. The factory tire was a 155, 80, 13-inch. I'll probably roll the wheel wells once the rest of the front end is put together. If worse comes to worse, I can run a 50-series tire. Three fingers in the back, two in the front. Busy cold.